Good morning. Glad to be here today to share what the Lord has put on my heart. Think about my last devotion, which was titled Fear Not. I think about the recent lessons and messages we've had on fear. It's really helped me lately. It's the way everything's going now in our land. We need to hear from the Lord today. I think about what am I fearful for? Why am I fearful? What are you fearful for? There's many challenges that we're faced with today in great adversity as we see the disobedience across the land is running rampant. We must seek the Lord today. We must have faith in Him. It springs to mind a time in the Old Testament when Moses and the Israelites were sent into the wilderness for 40 years because of their disobedience and forgetfulness of God's promises. Do you feel like sometimes you're in a wilderness? That we're in a wilderness right now? Times are tough. But we have a higher one. I think about what the brother said before about fear. Do not fear the ones that can take our physical life. Fear the one that can take our eternal life. Lord, help us today. The title of my lesson comes from Deuteronomy 31.6. As Moses is encouraging the Israelites and Joshua in the, in, in the end there, in their journey, Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's my title right there today. I think about it, even during those 40 years, God was still supplying, still supplying manna. But the people were disobedient. They were angry. They still wanted more. And even in our worst times, we got to know that He's still supplying. He's still giving us our daily bread. He's still in control. I look at a verse also from my last lesson. I'll read it again. Deuteronomy 31.8 And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. I think about some of the fears. Some of the times in my life were physically were the most fearful. Think about a time when Kelly and I were with a child. We were going to a, a routine doctor visit. Everything was going good. Got in there, and the nurse came in to do the sonogram. Seemed like she was doing it for an hour, but in minutes she said, I can't find a heartbeat. Lord. We were devastated. The Lord was still with us. He was right there with us the whole time. The nurse said, I'll be back. I'll go get the doctor to confirm what I've found. The doctor comes in within seconds. He finds a heartbeat. Everything's normal. No problems. The baby looks good. We were joyful. We were rejoicing in the Lord. 
And I think about life. And life is full of ups and downs. We will go through these times. Sometimes longer than others. But our Lord is good. He is faithful to us. I think about God's promises. We must not forget His promises. First Chronicles 28.20 20 says, And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of a good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee until thou, thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think about my son. I was sharing with a brother. We're getting ready to send him off to college next week. First time he's been out of the house, he'll be on his own three hours away. Hopefully for good. No, not really, but he'll be back. But as parents, you think, you know, have we done the right thing? We've raised him in church. We've showed him that discipline. But it's up to him now. It's on, he's on his own now. Lord, what do I say to him? Think about his new chapter in life coming up. Lord, what do I say? I say I reassure him of God's promises. Be strong, son, and of a good courage. Have faith that our Lord will take care of you. Be obedient. Joshua 9 says, I have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Truth will be separated for us from us here real soon, but you know what? He won't be alone. Amen. The Lord will be with him. Now think about us. Think about our church here. We've been separated from each other, and I miss everybody. I miss seeing everybody's faces. But I truly believe the Lord has separated us right here at this time. To call us unto Him to pour out our hearts. In, in our little chambers, He's wanting us to examine ourselves right now. To seek His face one on one. Lord, I want to do the right today. I would like to see us back together, Lord, but if you so see fit for us to be one on one with you, till you come back, Lord, let me. Let me be at ease at that. Lord, we know these times will pass. We thank you for being with us, even in our little chambers, Lord. Let us, let us praise you in secret prayer, lifting up the ones who are in need, Lord. Let's look at Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter thou into my chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. You know, he has separated us from the world right now. Be it a little moment we still have a, a great Lord who's taking care of us. Pour out your heart before Him. Tell Him your worries and fears. Lord, thank you. Matthew 6.6 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, 
and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, I pray, let us not fall into despair today. Keep us from becoming restless or dismayed or disobedient as it was in the days of Moses. Lord, let us always follow you and do what's right by you, Lord. And I ask you, please forgive us where we have failed you. But I also ask us, I also ask you to help us forgive and forget. Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The next verse basically says, If you do not forgive men their trespasses, your Father will not forgive you. Lord, I take that to heart today. I have one last excerpt here I'd like to read. And I'll be done. The God of Israel challenged his people to be strong and very courageous. But he also entreated them never to fear or to tremble with fright. And reassured them that he would be with them always. To lead and to comfort. To support and help them. No matter where they went or what they did. This is the same God who reassures us that His grace is sufficient in every life situation that we meet. This same God has equipped us with His indwelling Holy Spirit who is there to lead and to guide, to support and to help. And just as He did with His people Israel, He has challenged us to be strong in the Lord and the power of His mighty strength. What greater reassurance could the Lord offer to those that have placed their trust in Him? After being rescued from Egypt's tyranny and Pharaoh's slavery and having been baptized into Moses, the Israelites were led for many years to their wilderness walk, learning the lesson that all God's children must learn if they are to reach maturity with a faith that trusts His Word and obeys His command. In like manner, Christians have also been brought out of the world and saved from Satan's kingdom of darkness. We too have been baptized into Christ, separated unto God and placed in His body as His peculiar people. And like Israel, the Lord takes us through long years of child training and painful growing pains that we too will become mature in the faith, which trusts His word and obeys His command. As we continue on our journey through life, we will be required to face even greater challenges and more rigorous difficulties, but we are to be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. By putting on Christ and standing firm by abiding in Him, knowing that His grace is sufficient for the greatest challenges we may meet, and being fully assured God is the one who is going with us. For He has promised I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I thank him today. He has brought, brought peace in my heart. I know he's on the throne. And I pray that he will continue to bless his people. Thank you for your time.